the Patriots returning to next year's Super Bowl would essentially just be 2020 part two. Packer Nation, welcome to another episode of Podcast, the podcast where you don't have to be a Packers fan, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom. The evil empire may rise again, and it might even be worse than Rise of Skywalker. Grassi, and today we are going to be breaking down why the New England Patriots might be next year's sleeper team as they got a lot of ammunition to make all of our lives miserable once again. Because they're essentially the scorned ex in this relationship as Tom Brady went off and married someone a bit younger, already got another ring. They're about to burn his house down. Before we get to that, I want to do a big shout and thank you to some brand new patrons and YouTube members. First, on the Patreon side of thing, we have Sebastian B. A big shout out and thank you to you. And over on the YouTube side of things, we have Run It Back Chava, TBK Music, and Sebastian B. Once again, a big shout out and thank you to you all. Now, I mentioned this actually last night in the Breaking Down the Craziness of the Free Agency stream in which we were going over and we were taking a look at each team and how much cap space they actually had to play with, taking a look at some of the teams that were in cap hell, looking at you, Saints, Rams, and unfortunately Green Bay Packers for a little bit, and taking a look at some of the top teams like the Jaguars and the Jets and the New England Patriots. The New England Patriots right now actually have the third most cap space to play with at $68.5 million, which is pretty incredible. You last year, you had Bill Belichick coming out and saying, listen, you know, we went all out. We won a bunch of Super Bowls because we went all out. And then you take a look and we had to give Cam Newton a dollar, excuse me, a million dollars. And so they really weren't completely and totally competitive. Now, I want to make something very clear. The New England Patriots have some work to do on that roster, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Take a look at potentially running back, who knows what's going on with their quarterback position, and also, you know, wide receiver. There's apparently trade talks regarding Nikhil Harry, and who knows if Julian Edelman is going to be healthy enough to start the season. Lots of question marks there. However, offensive line looking pretty good, but today what I'm going to kind of break down is why the Patriots actually uh, might be loaded and ready to make another run for it, which, God help us all. Like, just give us a couple years. Just a couple. Now, with the cap space that they have, they're obviously in the market for some big-time free agents, and so that obviously will bring some much-needed veteran presence to the team and also potentially fill some holes. But on top of that, the New England Patriots were the team that was most affected by COVID last year. They had eight players opt out due to COVID, and they most certainly felt that. Of course, you had guys like Marcus Cannon, their offensive tackle, and a biggest one is their linebacker, Dante Hightower. Now, With Hightower missing, that defense did struggle, but even their version of struggling, they were still seventh in points allowed. So with Hightower coming back and a couple of these other pieces coming back, they should already be better without them even touching free agency and not even touching the draft. Of course, they also just traded for Trent Brown, in which I think they got the better end of that deal to make that offensive line look even more appealing. So whoever is going to be under center is going to be more well protected because that offense, besides a couple of weeks here and there, looking at like week one, maybe even week two, they struggled. They were 27th in points scored. And yeah, that you're not going to win a whole lot of football games when you're just a few spots away from the Giants and the Jets. So how does it feel to be at the bottom? 
But they can address that in a number of ways, whether that is going to be through free agency or taking a look at the upcoming draft. Right now, the New England Patriots have nine total picks. They were just awarded two comp picks yesterday, including the highest pick, which is the 96th overall, which equates to a third rounder. They also received a fourth round pick, giving them two. Now, the Patriots also have the 15th overall pick in the draft. So what does this mean? Well, they have options at what they want to try and address. They could go something like tight end, in which they can get a big weapon like Kyle Pitts, or maybe they even potentially trade up considering they have some draft capital and get their QB of the future. Now, I have to imagine that Bill Belichick is not particularly happy about how last year went, And the reason I think the Patriots are so scary in this upcoming season is they just have so many opportunities to make that team so much better. They can go the long route and do a slow rebuild, but with this much cap space and with the amount of draft capital that they have, they could also decide to say, hey, let's spend some of this money. Let's go and get our guys in the draft. And all of a sudden, oh, look, the Patriots are back. They already have a foundation of a very good defense. And Bill Belichick has shown time and time again that he essentially can take people off the streets and turn them into like amazing wide receivers so you know because they have all the luck I'm sure they'll be able to do that again I think the biggest question is going to be who is going to start at quarterback will they go and get their guy in the draft or are they going to bring in potentially a veteran in free agency like a Sam Darnold potentially Ryan Fitzpatrick maybe they'll decide to bring Cam Newton back on another cheap deal I mean Cam Newton has expressed that he would love to go back to New England honestly there's so many options Just not Deshaun Watson because I don't think my brain, heart, and also liver could take that if they got a guy like Deshaun Watson on their team. It won't happen, though. It won't. It won't. But I have to imagine that the Patriots are going to look like a very different football team this year and are going to most likely be a better football team this year. Now, looking at their 2021 opponents, they don't have the easiest run of things and also are within a division that's at least getting a little bit more competitive, except for the Jets. The Bills obviously going to the AFC Championship game and the Dolphins are getting better. You know, I don't know what's going to go on with Tua, but they're getting better. So the Patriots are going to have a little bit more competition than they have had in recent years. But knowing Bill Belichick and watching him operate for the past ever, or at least that's what it feels like, or at least since Emperor Papeltine has been around, I know not to doubt him. And with all of these things in his arsenal, yeah, the Patriots scare me a little bit. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Do you think the Patriots are going to be right back in the swing of things and right back in the playoffs? Or... You think they're going to commit to a slow, longer rebuild? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. You can always find me at TomGrassiComedy.com or at TomGrassiComedy. All social media you see down below. Check out podcasts on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, Spotify, and of course YouTube. And a big shout and thank you to all the patrons over at Patreon.com slash TomGrassiComedy and the YouTube members. But thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grassi. And as always, Go Pack Go!